This archaeological dig on what is now the Country Club of Louisiana shows that Indians lived here as early as 300 years before Christ. Relatively advanced residents. This was the social uh, center for the elite of that time. But slowly sailing up the Mississippi River came the first white men who would lay claim to Baton Rouge. On March 17, 1699, the French explorer Iberville found the red stick, the Baton Rouge. The Indians called it Estruma. But the Riverside landmark celebrated in this sculpture in modern times was nothing ceremonial. It was used to gut animals, deer, bear, fish, which was described, their heads were hanging on it. And uh, they didn't worship these animals. They gutted them and ate them right there. And Baton Rouge was left to the Indians till the 1700s. In 1779, the only battle of the Revolutionary War that was fought in Louisiana happened in Baton Rouge, then called New Richmond. The Americans whipped the British. Finally, the already weakened British were driven out by the Spanish Governor Galvez, who began to lay out a town. In 1792, when the Spanish ran our town, they needed somebody who spoke English to keep them in touch with the local populace. So they brought in a group of Irish priests headed by Father Charles Burke. Father Burke built a church on this site, which later became St. Joseph Cathedral. And to keep his Spanish bosses happy, Father Charles Burke referred to himself as Father Carlos Burke. But the flood of English-speaking Americans would eventually dominate Baton Rouge and produce a river port. Prosperity brought calamities like 1857. The sinking of the riverboat Princess killing 70 people. It was just offshore from the famous cottage plantation south of LSU, the ruins of which are still there today. But much worse destruction was to follow. The Union troops burned it down. The burning of the Louisiana State Capitol in the Civil War. Federal troops would burn private homes at the drop of a hat. The military governor, Benjamin Butler, was so hated by white Southerners that they had chamber pots used for restroom functions with a picture of Butler painted on the bottom. And the war brought a curiosity. Man, it's all looking good. Man, it's all looking good. While many African Americans fought with the Federal Army, a few blacks fought, yes, with the Confederate Army. But why? Certainly, there was a great attachment to the South. They had free blacks who may have owned property, had as much to lose as they saw it as Confederates because they owned land and, and obviously there were free blacks who owned other blacks. Thank you for checking out the WAFB YouTube channel. Subscribe now for more videos and live event coverage. And don't forget to download the WAFB News app on your phone for the local news and information you can depend on.